In the news, it is party time in Los Angeles tonight. The Dodgers prove them all wrong, shut out the Mets in the seventh game of the National League playoffs. They are World Series bound. And Dodger fans celebrate their heroes all over the Southland tonight. A million dollar fake perfume ring is busted in Fontana. More charges are dropped against the McMartin defendants. And Gary Franklin shows us a unique film about some very talented women. Next on Eyewitness News. My fellow Texans get kind of ornery when I tell them the best salsa is La Victoria. La <laughs> I told him not to worry. La Victoria Salsa Picante or Suprema. You just can't miss. Hi, Larry Huffman for your California Jeep Eagle dealers. We're all dressed up for the great clearance of 88. 1988 broke all records for Jeep sales, so we're celebrating with blowout prices on every Jeep and Eagle vehicle in stock. Save big now on Cherokee. Get an amazing $1,950 savings on select Comanches. Get $750 cash back on Eagle Premier. $1,000 back on Eagle Medallion. Bargains on everything during the great clearance of 88. You don't see deals like those every day, do you, Wally? <laughs> What makes great baseball special? Willie Mays' unforgettable catch in Game 154? Is it Reggie Jackson's sensational slugging in 77? Three pitches, three homers. No, it's AMPM Mini Market's great baseball special in 88. Two armor hot dogs with all the fixings you can pile on for just 88 cents. Oh, and Don Larson's perfect game in 56 was pretty special, too. Come in to AMPM now for the great baseball special. Number one in Southern California, Channel 7 Eyewitness News with Paul Moyer and Tony Little. Johnny Mountain has weather and Jim Hill with sports. Now, the Southland's leading news, Eyewitness News at 11. So the theme for World Series 88 is California, here we stay. As a proud Los Angeles paints itself Dodger blue tonight. Good evening, everybody. Here's what's happening on the 11 o'clock hour. The wild indoor block party in the Dodger clubhouse is finally winding down now as the Dodgers and their fans celebrate a win over the Mets in Game 7 of the National League playoffs and a trip to the Fall Classic. It was an improbable and surprisingly easy victory for a club Tommy Lasorda called the Team of Destiny. And indeed, one Los Angeles newspaper, the Daily News, saw it coming, passing out this early edition Thursday in the stands at Dodger Stadium, long before the issue was decided, but probably after the second inning, if you know what I mean. Standing by with details tonight of that big Dodger win, a champagne-soaked, nonetheless, redressed Jim Hill. Jim, better redress in order to come in here after smelling like better champagne. Believe it. Can you believe it? This time last year, they finished 16 games below 500 and in fifth place. What a tremendous turnaround. The underdog Dodgers turned a bulldog loose on the proud Mets tonight as a scrappy Los Angeles club completed one of the greatest comebacks in Major League history and fought their way into the World Series for the first time in seven years. The Dodgers scored first in six of the seven playoff games, and tonight was no different. After Mickey Hatcher doubled Steve Sachs to third in the first, Kirk Gibson got him home. Mitch infield playing back, and they'll give up a run on the ground ball and also on a fly ball this deep because backing up is Dykstra. Sachs is tagging, so is Hatcher. Both men advance. The Dodgers lead it one to nothing. The Dodgers put the Mets away with five runs in the second. It was two to nothing when Steve Sachs struck again. It was 6-0 after two innings, and the Bulldog Earl Hershiser did the rest, shutting out the Mets on five hits, and he got Howard Johnson to end it. In the World Series, the theme is California, here we stay. And I told our guys before the game today, I said, gentlemen, we're putting the pot of gold <laughs> on the Bulldog, and he's going to bring us home. What would you have said if someone had told you earlier in the year that the Dodgers would be in the Fall Classic? I would have said, we'll take it. <laughs> and so I just almost started celebrating and thanking God by myself right out there. And then when we got the out, I just I just fell down. It's just a, it's too much emotion to deal with. All right. I can't think of a better feeling at the moment. This, this is where we want to be right now. Look at that. Already? Why not? Yeah! Awesome. 
And so game one for this team of destiny is coming up at Saturday, 5.30 at Dodger Stadium. Former Dodger Dave Stewart will pitch for the A's and for the Dodgers starter. Well, I think Tommy Lasorda will wait until tomorrow to worry about that. And, of course, you can believe we'll be back with more highlights and postgame interviews later. Have we heard about enough of the Mets really are the best team? Look, we played seven games and we won. The is Dodgers that about the it? The Dodgers were the best team in this series. Just about every Dodger that you talk to will tell you, including Lasorda, that the Mets were the best team this year overall, over 162-game schedule. But for the best of seven, this particular series, the Dodgers were the better team. Was there a turning point uh, that... I think game four back in New York sure. when Gibson hit the home run and Sosha hit a home run. And they, Gibson hit two home runs in, within 12 hours. I think that was the turning point for him. Well, whatever. It yeah. worked. And congratulations. Yeah. And see you later, Jim. All across the Southland, Dodger fans are toasting the National League champs tonight. The celebrations got so out of hand at the ballpark, stadium officials had to cut off beer sales by the fifth inning. Joe McMahon caught up with the fans in their pennant frenzy at Dodger Stadium, and he has this report. With the final out of the game, some 55,000 fans at Dodger Stadium began the celebration. In the World Series, the These fans didn't leave the game early, as Los Angeles sports fans are wont to do. They stayed till the end, and it was so sweet. Dodger 6, Met Zip. Those fans who bleed Dodger blue talked about the hero of the game and the World Series matchup with the Oakland A's. You're talking about Oral Hershaz. You're talking about a man who uh, came around all year, 59 consecutive scoreless innings, and he showed it tonight why he is the number one pitcher in baseball. The Dodgers were great. We are going Dodgers, all the way. Dodgers! Yeah, Dodgers! Ah! Thought it was a great game. The Dodgers came back really hard. We're really happy for him. The Oral Hershizer was fantastic. He couldn't have asked for a better scenario. Best pitcher in baseball, Cy Young Award winner, and staked with a six-run lead. You can't lose. Disregarding the Mets fans who were here tonight, most of the other 55,000 people went home happy. That's because their Dodgers won the game, and they won the National League pennant. The World Series begins Saturday at Dodger Stadium against the Oakland A's. And that T-shirt says it all. National League champs, 1988, Los Angeles Dodgers. This is starting at $75 going as high as 600 for the very best, a couple at 650 for the real premium seats. Uh, they guarantee them seats to see the Dodgers in the World Series, and that's what everybody wants. And what you're telling me, those are the for Game 7? Uh, 75s are for Game 7, with Game 6 starting at 95, and the first two games here at the stadium start at $110 per ticket. Okay, real quickly, what, what kind of seats will a person get? Um, the lower price seats will be reserve seats uh, down the lines um, and some pavilion seats in the outfields. And they'll go up in price from there with the better seats running a little bit more money. Okay, Kenny. Happy man tonight. Thank Thanks so much. Best advice, of course, is to get your tickets as soon as possible if you want a good seat. This is Elaine Long reporting live. Back to you in the studio. Okay, Elaine. Thanks for that. Quite a range there. Believe it or not, there is other news. Next up, final preparations are made for tomorrow's presidential debate at UCLA. And more charges are dropped against the McMartin defendants. It's happening now. The Great Crab Harvest of 88 at Red Lobster. King crab from icy Alaskan waters, steaming, succulent, delicate snow crab to dip, drip, and savor. And get your first taste of our sweet, meaty Pacific Dungeness. We've created six crab and seafood combinations starting at $7.95. They're here now and only at Red Lobster. Friday through Sunday, it's our weekend special. Steak and shrimp just nice. How hot can it so hip. Answering machine for my car phone. Foreign films, okay. My imported beer with a twist. When you're done kidding around, Heineken. On the eve of their second and final campaign debate, contenders George Bush and Michael Dukakis warmed up in Los Angeles. The vice president made it a point to have a breakfast with Los Angeles Police Chief Daryl Gates, who has not endorsed the Republican, but whose sympathy, sympathies are not with the Massachusetts governor. Bush said that in the debate, he wants viewers to understand, in his words, what my heartbeat is and what I really care about. Meanwhile, Mike Dukakis got some disturbing news tonight from the ABC News Washington Post poll. Nearly 10,000 likely voters had Bush solidly ahead in the 21 states, with a total of 220 electoral votes, just 50 short of the winning total. Tonight, Pauley Pavilion at UCLA is looking more like a TV studio arena. Tomorrow, it will be packed with students and others for the wind-up debate of Campaign 88. And of course, we'll bring it to you live and direct right here at 6 o'clock on Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Paul.
Angela, the two defendants in the McMartin preschool molestation trial are facing 27 fewer charges tonight. Superior Court Judge William Pounders dismissed those charges today after three children refused to testify. Another eight are expected to be dropped against Ray Bucky and his mother, Peggy McMartin Bucky, before it's all over. The truth of the matter is the evidence these children presented at preliminary hearing and before was unbelievable. They essentially eliminated the most bizarre. The Buckies still face some 65 criminal counts of molestation and conspiracy, and prosecutors say today's action hasn't weakened their case against the former school teachers. Uh, we have had testimony um, from nine children in this case and medical evidence and testimony from uh, numbers of other people that we believe strongly supports our position. Prosecution is now wrapping up its case against the Buckies. Angela? And Paul, federal agents in Los Angeles announced another cocaine bust today, netting 1,200 pounds of the drug and the aircraft that was flying it in. The joint operation by the Drug Enforcement Agency and the Customs Service was the first big payoff since the government invested in a special radar center to catch well, smugglers. We seized this uh, from a Aero Commander aircraft, which is similar to the model sitting, sitting, uh, sitting on a table at the Chino Airport. Uh, two interesting things. This is probably the largest seizure this year of cocaine in the Riverside area. And to my knowledge, the first seizure of cocaine from a private aircraft in this part of the country. The agent said the pilot, 58-year-old Gene Maynard, was in the plane at the time and will be charged with drug smuggling. They estimated the cocaine value at $200 million and that of the aircraft at $1 million. The Riverside and San Bernardino County sheriffs today announced a major crackdown on an alleged fake perfume operation that's been operating for the past two years. After complaints from one of the real perfume makers, lawmen began an undercover investigation ending with a raid in a warehouse in an Indio. Fake bottles, cartons, and printing plates were found for such well-known brands as Giorgio, Jean Pateau, Chanel, and Christian Dior. Evidence was also found at a Fontana printing plant and a Northern California home. Three people have been charged in this case, with the investigators saying the legitimate manufacturers may have lost $20 million worth of business. Angela? All right. Still ahead, Jim Hill has Dodger and Met post-game interviews. But next up, the Mountain Man joins us with the midweek weather. Johnny's next. <laughs> Mercedes-Benz. So for magic touch, Ooh, it makes me glow so much. Ooh, it casts a spell, it rings a bell, the magic touch. This weekend, feel the Hyatt touch. The magic touch. You don't work for a company, you are the company. You take the risks, you get the rewards. That's why there's the corporate card with unique benefits for small business. Quarterly management reports, disability coverage, savings on hotels and air travel. Call 1-800-SUCCESS or take one. It's a business card that does things a little differently, a little better, like you. The corporate card from American Express to your success. Game one, World Series, Saturday, Los Angeles. John, pray tell, what will the weather be? I'm telling you, New York is no place to play baseball. We've already talked about this. You've got to play it out here with sunshine. That's the way it meant to be. By the way, when Jim Hill came back tonight, after the uh, Dodgers celebration, he was a lot wetter than Greg Luganis has ever been. Did you know that? <laughs> smelled little, different, too. Yeah, smelled a lot different. Little puddles were following him in of victory. All right, let's go outside. Let's check some tips because... These were the warm-up temperatures that we've had around the area today. One note right there, Palm Springs, only 92 today, and Pasadena, 86. To give you some idea, the valleys were 86, San Bernardino, San Gabriel Valley, 81. Torrance, 73, Woodland Hills, 82. Right now, partly cloudy skies. We're going to get a marine layer tonight, probably about 3,000 feet. Temperature, 63, humidity, 84. Wind southwest at 5, pressure, 30, 04. Our official high today, 76, 64, the overnight low. And check the time of sunrise about 7 o'clock in the morning, and then about 6.30 will be sunset, 6.22. We're trying to round it off so there's no confusion about this. 62 should be the overnight low. We'll get the low clouds in, maybe just uh, kind of a light wind. And speaking of wind, it should be up to about 12 miles per hour by tomorrow, but a very comfortable 74. 
Yes, indeed. Breathe early and often. The air quality will be good. As you take a look at some of the low temperatures overnight in Orange County, 58 and 74 along the coastal area tomorrow. But look at the valleys, upper 70s, Riverside to 81, 92 in the low deserts. The mountains should be 72, and of course, that is at the resort levels. By game time on Saturday, it'll be 75. Oh, get the U-Haul at Maud. We're going to California. <laughs> that's where they play baseball. <laughs> anyway, that's it, gang. Take me out to the ball. Okay, thanks, Johnny. Thanks. A salute to women directors is the subject of a new film. Gary Franklin tells us about it when we come right back. Stay with us. In voting for European Car of the Year, judges should consider the following criteria. Performance. Handling and general roadworthiness. Safety. Comfort. Introducing the front-wheel drive Peugeot 405, voted European Car of the Year by the widest margin in history. I just figured out why Jack in the Box calls these taquitos. They're crunchy like a taco. They're beefy like a burrito. Taco, burrito, taquito. I guess they could have called them barracos. <laughs> Introducing a new Mexican finger food, taquitos. Shredded beef in a rolled corn tortilla. Only at Jack in the Box. For exciting new tastes, this is the place. Oh, and you can dip them. Hey, taquito. Hey, isn't this Canada's new personal Zoom copy? Hey, checker, I know what things cost. So when other markets tell you they've got the lowest this or that, I know when it's a lot of baloney. But now that Safeway is bonds, they've lowered thousands of prices throughout the store. And with the unlimited double coupons, I think that they do. I mean, we really do have the lowest tape total in town. Check out the low prices at your new bonds and say hello to some old friends. Nobody else but bonds. The number of female film directors is slowly increasing, too slowly if you ask some of these women calling the shots behind the cameras. Their opinions are laid out in a new documentary, and Gary Franklin has a review. Gary. Well, Angela, the Women in Film Festival got underway tonight. Shirley MacLaine, the star attending. Friday, they're showing a documentary called Calling the Shots, and it's about desperately seeking Susan and Boat People and Valley Girl and Children of a Lesser God, movies that were made by women writing, directing, producing. These uh, guys from the catering truck gone. I turn and I go, yeah. Those numbers you see at the bottom of the screen, they're called editing time code. They're not in the actual documentary, but this is a pre-screening work print, so excuse please. I mean, I went for my first jobs and said, I want to be a director. And they said, don't tell anybody you want to be a director. My God, just tell them you're dying to be a production assistant. You really want to be a film editor someday, maybe. And whatever you do, get a manicure, wear eyelashes, and more makeup. One guy, Harvey LaRock, who was the first camera assistant, said, you know, Sandy, I didn't even know. He, he had read the script. He'd seen Sandy Wilson and assumed that it was some short Scottish guy. And it wasn't until he actually met me, uh, you know, at the motel. And I said, oh, hello, I'm Sandy Wilson. And I could see him sort of go like that. He didn't realize it was going to be a woman directing the picture. Note, please, sexist in those movie ivory towers. One of the biggest box office hits right now is Crossing Delancey, directed by Joan Micklin Silver. Silver has obviously produced gold. Put that in your cigar and smoke it and throw away the casting couch. Them days are gone forever. Calling the shots, Friday, Saturday, Cineplex, Beverly Center. Be there. Amen. Okay. Well, thank you, Jerry. Jim Hill, next sports. As the big blue wrecking crew shows New York how to win a pennant. This is no place. Clogged fuel injectors. As you watch, he's fixing it with mobile super unleaded gasoline. Its advanced detergent formula can unclog fuel injectors and keep your entire fuel intake system clean. Drive your engine clean with mobile super unleaded. High octane with a plus. Get a free Rams or Raiders glass with every fill up of eight gallons or more of mobile super unleaded plus. Only two imports have enough room to be classified as large cars by the EPA. There's this one, the Rolls-Royce Silver Spur Limousine, and this one, the Saab 9000. 
The people who buy this car pay others to drive for them. The people who buy socks never let anyone else drive. Now your Southern California Saab dealer terms are more flexible for buying or leasing. Free installation on DuPont Stainmaster Sculptured Saxony. No interest of payments till January 89. The great Stainmaster carpet sale only at Standard Brands. All right, the Dodgers are in the series. Let's talk about it some more, all right, Jim? Might as well. There's only the, going to be one story in Los Angeles for the next two weekends. The biggest story, the Dodgers and those Dodgers had a date with destiny tonight, pulling off one of the greatest turnarounds in baseball history. You see, after two straight fifth-place finishes, 16 games below 500, the Dodgers knocked off the favorite Mets to win the National League championship, and Team Destiny is going to the Fall Classic. The Mets are without a doubt the best team in the National League, man for man. What? So it just goes to show you what you can accomplish in life if you really believe in yourself. For the sixth time this series, the Dodgers score first, and it happened in the opening frame. After Steve Sachs singled off Mets starter Ron Darling, Mickey Hatcher doubles down the left field line, and Sachs holds up at third. Moments later, the Dodgers cash in. Kirk Gibson sends a sacrifice fly to deep center field all the way to the warning track. And Sachs breezes home to give Los Angeles a 1-0 lead. You think about all the hours of work that you put into it, all the ups and downs during the season, all the dreams when you had of a little kid, and then it all comes to a head right here. It's just amazing. The Dodgers jump on Darling again in the second by loading the bases with no one out. Oral Hershiser bounces to third, but rookie Greg Jeffries boots the ball. Mike Socia scores, and the Dodgers lead 2 0. The next batter up is Steve Sachs, and he singles up the middle. Jeff Hamilton and Alfredo Griffin both scramble home. All of a sudden, the Dodgers are leading 4 0, and Darling is out of the game. Dwight Gooden comes in to relieve, and Mike Marshall grounds one to second. Wally Backman shovels to Kevin Elster at second base for the force, but the toss is high. Hershiser scores, and the Mets are coming apart at the seams, 5-0. John Shelby then hits a sacrifice fly to left field. That allows Sachs to score from third base. The Dodgers send 11 men to the plate in the second inning, score five times, and L.A. is breezing along now, 6-0. We had to play our very best to beat those guys. And I think they're one of the best clubs in professional baseball. There's no doubt about it. But, you know, it, it's just amazing. I just thank God the way things turned around. And we're going and not them. The Mets, meantime, flunked their oral exam. Hershiser, the Bulldog, reverted back to his shutout form tonight, blanking the Mets on five hits to capture the most valuable player award for the series. The Dodgers eliminate the Mets in seven games, and for the World Series, it's California, here they stay. Oakland versus Los Angeles, game one, Saturday afternoon at Dodger Stadium. Just thank God for everything. I just I could barely hold tears back for, during the last out. We got two outs and nobody on. I said we're going to win this thing. It's just a matter of time. You know I don't know how many runs they're going to get, but I don't think they're going to get six. And so I just almost started celebrating and thanking God by myself right out there. And then when we got the out, I just I just fell down. It's just a, it's too much emotion to deal with. Where I started at the beginning of this season was nowhere where I thought I was going to finish at the end of the year. Though I tell you, I'm so happy for these guys and myself. I'm thankful to the Dodgers to give me another chance. I'm thankful I could show the American League general managers that they were wrong about me. When they look down and see Dodgers tradition, you talk about winning. I want them all to believe in themselves. And now the Dodgers have the city of Los Angeles rocking and rolling. I told Pat Riley when he won the championship in basketball, I said, Pat, I hope a little of you rubs off on me. And today we're in the Fall Classic, and we want to win this Fall Classic for the city. Meanwhile, in hockey, those amazing Kings have now won four straight games without a defeat. Wayne Gretzky scored two goals. The Kings beat Boston 4-2. to two. That's sports for this evening, folks. Okay, Jim, thanks for that. That does it for us. Nightline is next. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Number one in Southern California. Specializes in continuous soft hits. Coast 103 at 103.5.
Coast 103 updates you quickly in the morning and plays plenty of great music. The best songs to take with you while driving to work and great music to keep you company in the office. It's the one station everyone can agree on. So coast through your workday with Coast 103 and continuous soft hits. RB Furniture has the lowest prices. Grow up, never grow up, never grow up. Not me. Aren't there enough hours in the day when you have to be a grown up? Introducing the four wheel drive sidekick from Suzuki. You don't mind if I sit in your seat, do you? I'm saving this seat to the LA Clippers just for you. You don't want to miss our most talented young team ever, do you? I'm so excited, I'm thinking about coming out of retirement. Just kidding. The Dodgers win it. A cold third strike. The Oakland A's are next. I could barely hold tears back for, during the last out. When we got two outs and nobody on, I said, we're going to win this thing. It's just a matter of time. You know, I don't know how many runs they're going to get, but I don't think they're going to get six. And so I just almost started celebrating and thanking God by myself right out there. And then when we got the out, I just I just fell down. It's just a, <laughs> it's too much emotion to deal with. Well, it's great to be the underdog, I'll tell you, because uh, you're in a situation where you maybe in general you take the pressure off yourselves. And uh, it's nice to be the underdog. I'm sure we'll be the underdogs against the uh, A's, and that's fine with me. There was one Dodger who was not feeling at all like an underdog. We're ready! We've been shadow boxing! We've been running three miles a day! We've been chopping wood! We want Joe Frazier! <laughs> we see where the champagne in the Dodger clubhouse went tonight. As we have throughout this series, let's analyze a couple more of the key plays in this great Dodger Dave Stewart for the A's. There will be an unfriendly reunion throughout. Griffin, Jay Howell, Belcher, Davis, all ex-A's. Stewart, Bob Welch, and Rick Honeycutt of Oakland, all ex-Dodgers. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the Kings have won as many games in the last week as the Dodgers have. And at this rate, they'll be spraying champagne at the Forum for a team that goes 80 and 0. This is the year of the great one and the unbeaten ones. The Kings 3 and 0 through this morning, going against the equally unblemished Bruins. Keith Crowder scores one zip Boston. But Gretzky scores twice more to spark a third period barrage by L.A. Two goals for the league's leading score. The Kings run their record a 4-0 with the 6-2 win. And the Dodgers are champions. The bad timing award. Ron Darling of the Mets shown on a public service announcement tonight about throwing things in.